Is math just about getting the right answer? That's definitely part of it. But I'm here to tell you that the real heart of mathematics isn't just about what the answer is, it's about why the answer is. And proving that why is a mathematical superpower. In this video, we're going to try to demystify one of the most feared topics in math, the proof. And by the end of this video, you will have built your very first mathematical proof from scratch and have a framework to start building more. So first off, what even is a proof? Well, a mathematical proof isn't an opinion or a good guess. It's a rock solid logical argument that shows a statement is true beyond any doubt. It's the difference between saying, I think this is true, and I can show you with 100% certainty that it is true. Mathematicians care about proofs so much because they're the bedrock of all mathematics. Every single formula you've ever used, from the Pythagorean theorem to the quadratic formula, has a proof holding it up. Without proofs, we're just building castles on sand. What do these proofs look like? Well, every proof is built with a few standard tools. First, definitions. They give precise meaning to our terms. For example, what does an even number actually mean? It means an integer can be written as two times another integer. That's the definition of an even number. We also have axioms. These are the fundamental rules we agree on without proof. Things like a plus b is the same thing as b plus a. These are basically our starting points. And of course, we have the rules of logic. This is our reasoning engine. We use logical steps to connect our definitions and axioms to reach conclusions. Now, there are many ways to build your argument and many different proof techniques. Some of the most common are direct proofs, proof by contradiction, or proof by induction. If you want to see all these and more in action, you can watch my full proof course on YouTube. For this video, we'll just take a look at a direct proof. Let's take a look at this statement. The sum of any two even integers is even. In other words, an even number plus an even number is also an even number. This feels obvious, right? 2 plus 4 is 6, 10 plus 12 is 22, but that's just talking about examples. We need to prove it for any two even integers in the entire universe. This is why proofs usually use arbitrary letters or symbols. That way they can be universally applied. So let's just take two even integers. Call them x and y. Now here is one of the most important bits. We need to translate this into mathematics. Using the definition of even numbers, what does this sentence mean? Well, if x is even, that means x can be written as twice another integer, call it a. y can also be written as twice another integer, call it b. Notice how we're using, again, these arbitrary constants a and b to represent some integer. This is what it means for x and y to be two even integers. And this is why it's so, so important to know definitions when doing proofs. The rest feels like usual mathematics. We're talking about the sum, so let's sum them. Let's do x plus y. What's x? We called it 2a. What's y? We called it 2b. And now we need to think, what are we actually trying to show? What's our goal here? Well, we're trying to show that this sum, this 2a plus 2b, is even. And once again, what does it mean to be even? It's twice an integer. So we need to write this quantity, 2a plus 2b, as twice an integer. Fortunately, we can factor out 2 from both terms. That's a common factor of 2. And wouldn't you know it, since a and b are integers, their sum is an integer. In other words, a plus b is an integer, and 2 times a plus b is even by definition. It's written out a little more formally on screen here, 
But I hope you get the idea and the flow of the proof. Sometimes at the end, we'll write QED to signify that our proof is complete and we're done. Now, when you're first learning proofs, there are some common mistakes many students make. I talked about it briefly, but using examples instead of proving universally is a common pitfall. Just showing an example works once doesn't prove it for every case. Examples are not proofs. Another common error is circular reasoning. That's when you actually assume true what you're trying to prove true. That would be like saying the sum of an even number is 2k in our setup earlier. You can't start with the conclusion. It's so important I have to say it again, forgetting definitions or not being able to write down the definitions in terms of mathematics. Some teachers will tell you that most of a proof comes down to knowing the definitions of the things you're trying to prove and work with. This is a great starting point for most people, but if you really want to get good with proofs, take a look at the video on the screen. It's my full mathematics proof course right here on YouTube. After watching that, you're really going to get the hang of these.